After nearly 20 years of shows on East Burnside, one of our city's most beloved music venues, the Doug Fur Lounge, will be shutting down by the end of this week. But before we start cursing New Portland, just know that it will be reopening early next year in the previous building of the iconic late night restaurant, Le Bistro Montage. Aw, remember the montage, you guys? So today on ZittyCast Portland, we're talking with Annie Ostrowski, Director of Marketing for the Doug Fur. She's telling us about what we can expect from the new location and why we shouldn't be sad. We should be excited. It's Wednesday, September 27th. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Annie, why is the Doug Fur moving? I mean, our official statement is that it was just an unsustainable arrangement. Um, you know, we subleased from the hotel. Mm. But I think the real reason is that the owner just came across the new space and wanted to do something with it regardless of the Doug Fur situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just became a great opportunity to kind of build things out and build the space however we want it. And, you know... I think it's also really challenging keeping to the 7 a.m. breakfast schedule as a music venue, you know. Oh, for the hotel. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that, that you guys were that connected. The thing about having a hotel restaurant is that you have to be open 7 a.m. to like 12 Mm a.m. So I think that's just that was just a challenge always. So the new space kind of afforded us to focus on what, you know, we love most, which is music. Mm-hmm. and having shows. And there will be food carts and bars and still have that Doug Fur feel, but it'll be a little more simplified and revolved specifically around the music. Yeah. You know, the Doug Fur is such a Portland institution to so many people. Like, what was your initial reaction when you heard about the move? I was really sad and kind of taken aback. And I was sitting in the Doug Fur when I found out. So just kind of looking around at all these fixtures that are so unique to the space. Mm-hmm. I've just always loved the venue. You know, you could see the stage from anywhere. The sound is great. The best sound. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really intimate in there. And I really love going down those stairs, just entering into this basement space. It feels like you're in kind of the secret room with everybody seeing a show. And um, so, yeah, that part, it really felt like a loss. But you know, as time passed and I saw the new space, I started getting more and more excited about the potential mm-hmm. of the new location. And so it's definitely bittersweet. Yeah. It's been in town pretty much as long as I've been visiting or living in Portland. You know, I remember driving down with friends in college when I was in Olympia just to catch shows and to do like fancy brunch the next day. Uh, <laughs> I remember at a point, the Doug Fur really was like one of the nicest restaurants in town, which is kind of funny to think. I mean, we always had fancy restaurants, but you know, like fancy affordable restaurants, you know, that had a happy hour and like, and you would want to hang out in. Yeah. And it was cool. Yeah. It's like a cool space. So I would always bring out of town guests there too, because it was so unlike any other place in town or even in other cities. Yeah. I mean, for those who haven't been inside the Doug Fur, could you kind of explain it? I can't imagine if you're living in Portland and you've not been inside the Doug Fur, that's like you must remedy that before it is moved because that is <laughs> at least 20 years or so of this space existing and, and being a huge part of the music community in Portland and like the things that make Portland Portland, you know. How would you explain the Doug Fur to someone who's just like never been there at all? You know, I've heard it described as Twin Peaks meets the Jetsons, <laughs> kind of in that like futuristic and also really woodsy mid-century design. You know, there are a lot of things on the walls are made of logs. There are real logs in there. Yeah. Um, the bar is all made of wood. You know, it's just very like classy and also woodsy, which you wouldn't think are two things that would go well together, but they just they made it happen. It's really incredible. It has like a lodge feel for sure. Do you remember the first time that you went to the Doug Fur? Yeah, I was up here visiting and I was checking in at the hotel because I was staying there. And I ran into some friends that were also part of the radio station that I was part of in college. So it was really obvious it's where people went who were into music. Mm -hmm. And I remember just being really taken aback by the whole location because you could go there and as a tourist really stay there, eat there, um, go to shows. And they used to have like that little store up top with all the screen printed posters. And I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, flipping through those. And I just thought it was such a cool, immersive area. 
I can't remember which show I saw. I was trying to remember that, but it kind of just really impressed me. And so when I was offered to work there, I was just really excited because it's been such a huge part of what Portland means to me and what drew me to Portland in the first place. Yeah. You know, I always considered it uh, the best sounding venue in town. You know, I remember the first time I got to play, uh, it was like such a big milestone. Like it was like, oh, we're a real band. Like we, we got to play at the Doug Fur, you know, like it wasn't a basement show. Like, oh. And then afterwards, I remember eating a burger and being like, whoa, look at me. You know, like the burger tastes different Like because <laughs> I played at the Doug Fur. <laughs> yeah, it, felt, it feels kind of fancy. Did you play there often? You know, I feel like the first time that we played there, it was just a fluke. We sold it out. It was because my band was very, it was a very odd trajectory. And so the first time we played there, it was like we were playing a basement and then we played the Doug Fur and it was like sold out. And we were just like, what the fuck are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> but then the next time we played, it was like with Shonen Knife, we opened up for them. Um, and I feel like every time a big band played, they were just like, do you want to open up for this band? You know, and I think at one point I lost my guitar there. Oh no. I couldn't find it. Like I just, it was underneath something. Cause I remember like Stephen Malkmus and the Jicks asked us to play and we said no because I couldn't find my guitar. And then we found out that it was just actually at the Doug Fur. Like someone <laughs> just left it there, just lost my guitar. You know, there's a lot of stories of the place being haunted. So maybe one of the ghosts just, the, uh, you know. Never want to hear this person play music again. Let's just take this guitar. <laughs> um, and those are some great shows that you played there. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, I remember seeing the Vaselines there when they were they they came through, wow. and that was like one of the best shows I've seen. And and also like I just never thought that I would be able to get see the Vaselines. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, have you heard from the music community at all? Like, have they? Has anyone like written in and been like, "Don't you dare move the dub fair"? Or like any <laughs> feedback from the music community? Yeah, we've had some really touching messages. Um, you know, Eyelids played their last show there and like all of their posts were just talking about how sad they were. Tango Alpha Tango mentioned how they really felt like they had grown as a band by playing there over the years and gone from opening to selling it out. So it was just it's been really nice to hear from artists about how much the space has meant to them and there has been a lot of concern about the logs. A lot of people are oh, curious yeah. about what's going to happen with the logs, which the plan is to bring some to the new space. Oh, cool. um, but yeah, I think it's just been a mixture of, you know, sadness for the place leaving, which is really understandable, but also a lot of excitement for the new things that the new location will offer, like band parking and the band load-in zone. And we're going to have like a huge green room with bathrooms, which we don't have now and showers. So I think, you know, there's some excitement there as well. That is cool. I always like the green room space at the Doug Fur, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, we'll have to start a new sticker wall <laughs> at the new space. <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, well, let's take a quick break here. And when we return, let's talk about what we're looking forward to in the new space. So you, you told us a little bit about what we could look forward to with a new space. Is it still going to feel like a fancy lodge or is it going to be its own thing? Because I know that it's it's heading to the empty montage space, uh, which is another much loved old Portland spot. And I feel like there's something bittersweet about this union, seeing that space come alive again. Yeah, it's interesting that we're going from one old hotel to another old hotel, because I think that the new space was built in 1905 originally. So it has that old Portland character and history, mm -hmm. um, which I think automatically makes it a really unique space. But from all the plans I've seen, it's really, you will retain the classic Portland or Doug Fir feel. The, the new space will still have some of that like classy mid-century feel to it and some logs there, but it'll just be larger and I think a little nicer. There will be two bars, parking for guests, there will be rotating food carts and there will also be a big patio for people to spend time on. And there's just a lot of businesses in that area that have been excited to have us nearby. So I think there will be some opportunity for community engagement and working with other businesses nearby. Cool. I love that area. That's one of my favorite areas in, in town. And I'm excited that the area will have new life you know, coming to it because I feel like the, the, there was a period where it just sort of went to the wayside and a lot of people felt unsafe walking around. And when I first heard about the Doug Fur, 
uh, going into that area, I was a little concerned, you know, because the shows end late. And I'm just like, oh, man, like just thinking about all the young kids, you know, trying to get a ride out or whatever. Um, it's literally underneath a bridge, you guys. Like it's under, <laughs> it's like, that's what it feels like. It's like you're underneath all of the freeways and the bridges. Are you guys at all concerned about safety? You know, we have a really strong security team and I think it'll just be expanded upon to address that specifically. But also when the duck first started, everyone has mentioned that that part of town just was like also kind of unsafe. And had its own issues. So hopefully with new life going down in that area, things will start to open up more and other businesses will feel safer as well. Mm -hmm. And it is really close to public transportation. And it really is only like 800 yards away from our old space. So <laughs> it's very much part of the same kind of neighborhood that we exist in now. But, you know, we have lollipop shop there. We have the get down. So there's kind of a little area of local venues so I think we could all support each other and yeah. try and make it a safer space. Well, I, I heard that there was going to be some stadium seating inside. Could you explain that? Because I don't understand that. It'll mainly be standing room. But as you enter um, to the right, as the plans are now, there will be some seating like against the wall for any guests that want to sit or need to sit down. So there will be some limited seating. And there's also an opportunity to do more all ages shows. I've, I've heard that mentioned several times. That is Really good news because Portland sorely needs more all ages shows and like all ages shows that aren't awkward, if that makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not like a line down the middle of the room or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or and it's someone yelling at you because like you've faced your drink in the wrong direction, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, are you guys doing anything special for this last week uh, at East Burnside? I mean, I hear there's a closing party. Uh, what's the dealio? Yeah. Annie, on... what's the dealio? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that in so long. <laughs> um, on the 29th, which is a Friday night, we're going to be having a DJ party upstairs, which everyone is invited to. The Beaches crew from X-Ray FM are heading that and they're getting some of their co-DJs to get involved. So it should be a really great, feel-good DJ night at uh, my plan is hopefully that we can get some cake and we'll have some drink specials and just kind of make it a closeout celebration party that night. And then the night that I'm really looking forward to is on Saturday with Earl Thomas closing things out with two back-to-back -back shows, early show and a late show. And just to have such an important Portland musician and somebody who's played Doug for, for years and sold it out time after time be it like our very last show in that space feels really special. So I'm, I'm glad that that's going to be the last night, but also it'll, of course, be sad for everyone in the Tugdens. Yeah. That's going to be a really like happy, sad night. Yeah, exactly. From what you've described, Annie, I'm actually looking forward to the new space. But yeah, I mean, it, it's the end of an era for sure. But hey, that's what happens. Cities grow. Yeah. And I think the best part is, is it's not just closing and going away. You know, it's continuing on. We'll have a little bit more capacity. Well, thank you so much, Annie, for taking the time to hang out with us and give us the uh, info on what's happening with the Doug Fir. There's been a lot of speculation. I remember when we first heard about this months ago, we had, you know, I think we talked about it for like 20 minutes with no facts. So <laughs> this is not... <laughs> I've been waiting about a year to be able to tell people. So <laughs> it's really exciting to finally get to talk about it. And now for your microdose of news. A federal judge has ordered the city of Portland to pay eight civil rights attorneys nearly $800,000 in fees and costs related to a lawsuit over the city's use of excessive force during the 2020 protests. And the northern part of the Willamette River has been deemed safe for people and pets, but there's still a warning to keep away from the water around Selwood and Ross Island. Plus, it's Sea Otter Awareness Week. Maybe someday soon we'll be able to see them out in the wild in Oregon again, but if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you should check out our August 14th episode, Why Oregon Needs Sea Otters. I'll link it to the show notes. For even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll also throw a link to that in the show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend, rate or leave us a good review. It really does help us out. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. Slim's.